Welcome to this week's edition of the Tiger Football Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Pete Shinnick. And coach, Tigers traveled down to College Park this past Saturday, a, a team that was coming off a nice season and expecting big things this year in the Big Ten. And, uh, you know, the game didn't go the way you wanted, but it wasn't an embarrassing game either. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, you know, and a lot of people, talking to a lot of people, they've said, well, you know, hey, good things that, you know, we talked to our team about, you know, we, we need to play at our best all the time. And uh, so, uh, you know, the way I looked at it, I, I, I didn't think we played great. Um, I think they played well enough to beat us. Uh, what we've learned about ourselves uh, is that we've got to be dialed in and we've got to be on point to be the team that we want to be. Um, you saw that in spurts uh, against uh, a very good Maryland team. I mean, a team that I think is going to, you know, go to go to a bowl game and have an opportunity to win a lot of games. Uh, but you also saw when we're not focused and we're not dialed in, what that can look like as well. And uh, you know, I don't I don't care who you're playing. Uh, you've got to take care of the little things, and you've got to all be on the same page in every aspect of what we're doing. And that's really what you know I take away from that game. Um, you know, I, I feel like if our guys played their best, it'd be a different game. But credit to Maryland, uh, they did what they needed to do, and, and they, uh, they came away with a victory. A couple of positives from the ball game, I thought. One, Devin Matthews and Diego Hunter both averaged four or more yards per carry, which was good against a very good Maryland defense, and you did not turn the ball over at all. Yeah, that was huge. That was one of the things we, we, we went in saying we needed to secure the ball and to have an opportunity to uh, play well against Maryland, we needed to have zero turnovers. Well, we did that. On the flip side, we needed to create some turnovers, um, which we were unable to do, which, you know, again, credit Maryland. I thought they did a great job of securing the ball, and uh, their quarterback was extremely accurate when, uh, you know, when he was pressed. And we knew when he got out of the pocket that he was dangerous to run or throw, and we saw both of that uh, on Saturday. Yeah, he runs better than his brother. Well, he does. Uh, he does. Uh, and then, you know, for Devin and Diego, you know, felt great about what they were able to do. But credit our O-line uh, because our O-line went in and, you know, you know went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a very good Maryland defensive line and very good linebackers. I mean, two returning linebackers that I think are, are exceptional. Um, so to be able to do that, be able to hit it up in there, run our inside zone, run our outside zone, run our counter, run them well, uh, that was very pleasing. The quarterback always gets too much credit or too much blame. Um, Nathan Kent getting his first start. How do you assess his uh, his performance on Saturday? Yeah, I think you know, and, and I think I think Nathan would tell you the same thing. I think if we could get rid of his first quarter, um, you know, I think he'd feel pretty good about uh, you know what he was able to do. Again, he didn't turn the ball over. I don't think he had um, you know terrible throws uh, after the first quarter. I think the first quarter he had a little jitters and you know he missed on a couple of things. I think there's a throw right before the half in the second quarter that he'd like to have back as well, uh, where we had DK on a crosser, which I felt like if we could have connected that, we could have gotten the first down, extended the drive a little bit. Um, and so, you know, as we looked at it, I really feel like, um, you know, he played well once he settled down. And so talking to him this week and talking to him throughout, uh, you know, the last couple of days, it's like, look, you got to settle down and now you've been hit. Now you've experienced all this. Now you know what it looks like. You saw great speed of the game. You saw guys flying around. Uh, you know, now we got to start the game where you ended it. Uh, and I felt like his last pass of the game on fourth and three to DK, which DK unfortunately didn't hang on to it, that's the type of ball he needs to throw. He throws that thing with conviction. He rifles it right in there, smack in the chest. We got an opportunity to score a touchdown there late in the game. We catch that ball. Uh, you know, he started to throw with conviction, and he started to get a uh, grasp of it. And so excited about what I think he can do moving forward. This week you jump into conference play. Uh, take on Monmouth, a team that took on Florida Atlantic last week. They were losers in that ball game, but they, they did put up some offense. And, and Marquez uh, McCrary, their quarterback, threw for 249 yards and a couple of touchdowns. He's kind of a dynamic player that you'll see. 
Yeah, he really is. And, I, you know, I mean, they lost the quarterback uh, to the portal who's, uh, you know, went up to an FBS school, and now he comes in and does a great job. Started uh, Virginia this past yeah, week, I think. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you know, they, they, they found something going on there. But he, he came in, did a great job. We're going to have to contain him. Uh, he'll take off and run. Uh, you know, if you lose pocket containment, we're going we're gonna to see him take off and run. And he's got a quick release that uh, fires the ball out there. Uh, really impressed with, you know, what he does. Um, you know, their running back is one of the best in the country. Um, you know, uh, FAU contained him a little bit, uh, but at the same time, he's still very explosive. You saw that on a couple of runs as he popped, I think, a 15-yarder and a 10-yarder up in there on a couple of occasions. So um, I think this is a complete offense. Our defense has got to pick up right where they left off. You know, we finally got a sack there in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, we got we to gotta continue to create the pressure uh, that we have, uh, you know, started at Maryland. Uh, I felt like we were able to get some hits on the quarterback. I think we probably could have had a couple more sacks. Uh, we got to do that this week to, you know, play the type of defense that uh, we're capable of. Well, you mentioned the running back, Jaden Sheridan, and, and he had 74 yards last week. The guys returning on defense are going to remember him because last year in the game up at Monmouth, he rushed for 211 yards and three touchdowns, a shootout that the Tigers won 52 to 48. So I'm sure your guys remember him. Oh yeah, there's no doubt, and I think I think the first play of the game. I mean, I think the first time he touched the ball, uh, he 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 took it to the house. So, Seventy five yards. Uh, yeah. So uh, our guys remember that. And again, I you know in, in practice this week, we've really been focusing on a lot of their run scheme. They got a lot of motion. They got a lot of. Uh, uh, what Coach Doolin calls eye candy out there to get your eyes distracted. I think our D-line can be disruptive. Uh, I think we saw that Saturday against Maryland. I think when we slant and we angle, uh, we can create issues uh, for our opponent. We got to do that. We got to be in the backfield. We got to get him going laterally and not downhill. Uh, but yeah, I think he's one of the top backs and we're, we're, we're going to have to do a great job against him. As the season has now begun, now you get into a routine every week with, with uh, practice schedules and everything else. How does this differ game two for the way you prepare for game one? Yeah, you know, you come out of camp and you're, you're kind of still in that mode of, you know, you're spending a lot of time going against each other. Last week was really kind of the adjustment week to get our scout teams ready to get uh, going, you know, starting for a different opponent. Right now we're in a little better routine. So our practices on Tuesday, Wednesday uh, do a lot of plays against our scouts, uh, a few plays against, uh, you know, Towson versus Towson, as we say. Uh, and it really does kind of get our guys to where we want to be. Monday, is a regroup day work on soreness get that out of the system we lift that day Tuesday is a half padded practice Wednesday is typically a full padded practice by Wednesday we want to you know walk off the field uh, feel like we've got a great look at everything that they do Thursday we come back in helmets and kind of make sure that we're all dialed in and on the same page and then Friday is really a walkthrough so um, you know, one of the things we talk about is being a fresh team come Saturday uh, and also being the best conditioned team come Saturday. So we feel like we work hard on Tuesday, Wednesday, get to where we need to be on Thursday. Then we, you know, we come out Saturday and we're ready to go. So that routine started the last week. This week, uh, we just kind of continue to refine it. We joked a little bit before the show about the weather this week, which is very hot. And you said that could be a good thing. Well, yeah, I... I, I don't mind practicing in the heat. Uh, I think our guys need it. Uh, I think this week uh, it was good to work out some of the stiffness and the soreness. Anytime you play an opponent like Maryland, you're going to have some of that. Uh, if you follow that game up with a cold game, you probably don't work out some of the things uh, that are in there. I feel like our guys were loose uh, after this practice uh, on Tuesday uh, that we had. And, you know, Wednesday will be the same thing. So um, I think it works out a lot of the soreness. And then they just got to get their bodies, you know, rehydrated and uh, back to where they are. And again, we don't know what it's going to be like, uh, you know, this Saturday night. We don't know what it's going to be like against Morgan. I mean, anytime you're playing uh, really in Maryland, uh, you know, in the month of September, you could get anything. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's good to prepare for it. And I thought our guys handled it really well. Like they always say in Maryland, if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes, it'll change. <laughs> We hope everybody can be out at Johnny United Stadium this Saturday night when the Tigers take on the Hawks of Monmouth. Again, last year was a 52-48 to shootout. If we get anything like that this week, it's going to be a lot of excitement. Coach, thank you, mm -hmm. and we will see you again next week. We thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Tiger Football Report.